In different churches, we glorify you, Lord. We exalt you, Lord. We adore you. For salvation of souls in different cities, for building up your people through different ministries. Some places souls were saved. Some places souls were preserved. Father, we glorify you. Thank you for all your able army across the globe. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name forever. In Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Good morning, everyone. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord prosper you. May all your heart desire that is in line with the will of God for your life, may they be granted. May everything you are thanking him for never become a source of sorrow in your life. May the children he has blessed you with, may they remain a blessing. May scripture be fulfilled upon their life. They are your seed and they are expected to be mighty. I decree God's mightiness, hands of greatness, rest upon all our children, at home and abroad, in the name of Jesus Christ, biological and spiritual. May the hand of God rest mightily upon them, in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord will have me this morning to speak to people who are frustrated. Life is a journey and it's full of bends. It's full of corner. It's full of ups and downs. The fact that we speak faith does not disannul reality of life. It's only that our faith triumphs in the midst of the realities of life. Somebody say, why will you talk this way? Because I'm talking scripture. He said, when thou walkest through the fire, so there are fire of life. He said, when thou passest through the rivers, there are water that overwhelm people. The Bible itself, God said, I will go before you and make crooked paths straight. So they are there. They are there. Crooked paths. Paths that are expected to go the way you plan it. But on the contrary, it is opposite your plan. They are called crooked paths. And God said, if we go before the Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 45, verse 1 and 2, he said, I will go before thee and make the crooked place straight. He said, I will break in pieces the gate of brass. These are the reality of life. These are what happens day in, day out. As we journey in life, days are there that you will not see your expectation coming to pass. They are there. They are there. Why will God say, endure as a good soldier of Christ if all the road are smooth? God will not say so. So I want to speak to those who look like, uh, who are, I don't know who you are, but you are there going through tough time. I want you to know, tough time doesn't kill people. It refines you and brings the best version of you to assistance. Take note of that. Tough time don't kill. That's why the Bible says you endure it. This is a run away from it. Endure. Hardness as a true soldier of Christ. Hardness.
there are parts that are hard. There are things we are going through and they are hard. Hard on you. You pray, it looks like nothing is happening. You apply what you think the word of God is saying about your situation and it looks like it's getting worse. You remember there was a woman uh, in, the, in the book of Mark chapter 5. The woman with the issue of blood. They say all the physicians that attend to her, they are worsening her situation. But I want you to know there is always a brighter cloud after this dark cloud. I want you to know. So don't even contemplate of suicide. Don't stop question why me. It has to be you and it has to be you because of the glorious destiny that God has for you. Nobody wastes his resources on what has no value. And that includes Satan. Yes, you heard me well. That includes Satan. Satan, Satan is a great businessman. He also don't waste his resources on a valueless life. If you see him around you, it's because there is life in you. Because you can only kill what is alive. If you see him around you, is that you are precious. Only precious things are being stolen. If you see him around you, you will know that you have life beyond what you know. Because he said he has come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And so nobody wastes his time on what is not his objective. The reason why you come under these hard times sometimes is because of whom God has made you. I know Satan, to some level, I think God gave him a high shoe that he has a high height that sometimes is preview to our destiny. You remember before Moses was born, there was a law to kill him. All the children born around that time. You remember Jesus? As a little child, there was a king who was looking after his life. But we recollect what God said about Moses. He said, because he was a proper child. Let your hard time not indicate that you are a victim. Let it indicate that you are a victor. Let it be a pointer of who you are, not be a pointer of you that is valueless. Let it not suggest to you, remember we just ran a very great uh, seminar uh, convention during our convention. And that man, Jesus saw the other side, but the disciples saw a different side. The side that G the disciples saw was that he must have committed sin or his parent. But Jesus said, you know, there is another view of that perspective. It is because God wants to manifest in him. I want every one that you are there now crying, you look like you are helpless. It's just a cloud. And I pray that evil rain will not fall to your house. It's just a cloud. There are clouds that gather that never produce rain. And I want you to know such is the situation that you are going through. It will not lead to shame. Because God said in his word, my people shall never be ashamed. So remain and hold tenaciously to this God. Is able to avert shame on your life. As shame means shame came and fulfilled. But God said, it will come, but it will not happen. You will not be ashamed. I say, you will not be ashamed. Sometimes you wonder, why is your life this way? I've been there before. And I believe that is where why God asked me to strengthen someone today. I have a different thing in my mind, but God sent me to you specifically. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Hard time does not produce bad people that have understanding. It refined them. It refined them. Daniel went through it. Joseph went through it. The three Hebrew boys went through it. The children of Israel went through it. The Bible said they went up harnessed. 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 Let this situation, let this cloud groom you. Let it groom you. Don't throw in the... He said, for the light affliction is for but a moment. You are not doomed 
I talk to you authoritatively this morning. It's a light affliction, Corinthians chapter 4, I think 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. He said, for the light affliction, which is God acknowledged, God is aware of what you are going through. He said, but it's for a moment. It is not a permanent position. Mm -hmm. Don't make it permanent by making silly decision. Mm -hmm. Don't make it permanent by making, uh, by making a foolish decision. You don't have to take your life. No, you don't. You don't have to take your life. That life you think is useless. If you take it today, some people will find means of living through your action. That means there are other actions in you that can give you life. I speak to you prophetically that you are coming out of every trouble. You are coming out of every trouble. Oh, the oil and the mandate of restoration is given to me. And I exercise it in your favor. There is the other side of what you are going through. God is on the way. God is on the highway. Coming through for you, paving way for you, set to make you, set to make you, you know, an excellent person. That you will look back and say, I thank God I went through. Only those who went through have a breakthrough. Your breakthrough is on the way. You heard David say, he said, I have followed thee hard. It is when, listen to me, it is when you disappear unceremonially on a hard route that you are forgotten. You remember the disciple, many of the disciples of Jesus. One day Jesus introduced a topic, and it was very hard in Matthew chapter 6. He said, Today I'm going to start giving you my blood. And my flesh. And they say, How can this man say this is a hard thing? Who can bear? And the Bible says, And they walk no more with him. Some of them, God brought them to Jesus so that we could have a chapter about their own perspective of ministry today. Just like we read the book of Peter, we read John, we read Mark. They erase their legacy because they could not, they didn't know what to do with a hard time with what is hard. Everything that hard is hard is out to make a better version of you. A better version of you. The Bible says, from that time, many of his disciples went back. Don't go back. Keep on going forward. Mm -hmm. Keep on going forward. Keep on knocking that door. It will open. It's a door. Somebody must pass there. And why not you? And why not now? The door is not open, yes, but keep on knocking. It is a door. It is meant to be a passage. It is not meant to be a fence. Whatever is around your life this morning that is supposed to be a wall, keep on knocking. Is a kaya turned to the wall? Is a kaya turned to the wall? The wall you don't turn to is the wall that will not collapse. The children of Israel got close to the wall of Jericho, but they didn't turn back. They kept doing what God said they should do. What has the word of God said to you concerning your own situation? God has a word for every situation. Nothing ambushes our God. Yes, <laughs> oh, he declared the end from the beginning. Concerning the barren this morning, stop weeping. Oh yes, I appreciate your cry. And that is expected of you. We know when you don't know what to do, tear is automatic. But let me tell you one thing. That is what God asks you to do. As a barren woman. What is it? He said rejoice. He said rejoice. You know what he said you should do? He said sing. In the village where I come from, you are not permitted to do that. You know, you, are, you didn't give birth and you wake up singing in the morning. Your in-law will come hard on you. Huh? They say, Milo Yossi. What is he? What was the source of his happiness? But your source, let your heart, source of happiness this morning be what God said. He says, sing, O barren. The remedy to barrenness is joy. What you can't get by instruction, you will not get it by destruction. Don't destroy your life. Don't pack up in a marriage. Just wait a little. He that promised to come will surely come. God is coming through for you. I pray for you. Just like God turned the situation of Hannah. Is going to turn your situation around. Here is the word of God, and the word of God is the hammer of God to break every hardship. 
in Isaiah 54, he says, Sing, O barren, for many are the children of a desolate man. Then he went for that. He said, You will break forth. We all know the story. What happened to Hannah? Hannah became a joyful mother. Mm -hmm. Whatever you like today, God can make you to be a distributor of it. Yes. Samuel was from Hannah. Oh my God, your Hannah is on the way. Your Isaac is on the way. On that issue, you will be the one to love last and you will love best. You will be the one to love last and you will love best. Oh, you had Sarah. He said, who will have said? Who will have said? Who will have said that, oh, Sarah also will give birth to son for Abraham when he was old. But you know what they said concerning Sarah? The Bible says in Hebrew chapter 11, verse 11, you see, Sarah received strength when she judged God faithful. When she judged God faithful. The one you accuse cannot help you. Stop accusing God. He's your helper. He's not your enemy. He's against your enemy. He told Joshua, I am for you. In Old Testament, if God can be for Joshua, why not you? Why don't you have that as part of your profile? That God is on my side. I speak to you. You know, Jesus came and in his mission, he was to heal broken hearted people. I know you have suffered frustration, but I'm telling you this morning, by the word of the Lord, that you are just closer. Oh, if you permit me to say, I believe by the Spirit of God, you are the eve of your miracles. At the eve of your miracle. That is why it's looking overwhelming. You know, when they were walking around Jericho, nothing happened, even on the sixth time. It looked like they have done nothing. But the sudden God came for them. They walk, they want, you know, they, they ask them to walk seven times. And they walk, they want day two, day three. Even you, when you get day five, you become frustrated. Check those who do marathon. When, it remain, when, the, when the distance is shorter, it looks like they should give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. The last blast of walking around Jericho, Jericho came down. Don't think all the effort, all the kingdom advancement, all the giving, all the righteousness you are walking, you have stay on God, stay on God. Don't think they don't count. When you are hitting a rock, it's not the last hit that blasts the rock. It is the combination. You are closer to the eve of your miracle. Some of you are actually on the eve of your miracle. Don't give up. Don't give up. Oh yes, testimony becomes sweeter when it is harder. If you get it so easily, it's not going to be ear tickling testimony. God wants to give you an ear tickling testimony. And I believe God with you that you share your testimony with us you are going to recount this morning because the beginning of every breakthrough is instruction. God have asked me to instruct you this morning to keep, <laughs> excuse me, <coughs> to keep doing what you are doing. And I see a new day for you. God is coming to honor your faith. We are in the 11th month. And 12, 2023 is just one month to go. So this is the eve of the new year. If these are the month that stand as if, that these are the, the, the last minute score. You are scoring this and Satan will have no time to reverse it. In the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Be strong and be of good courage. Be strong. You are not an atema. You are not a no man. Nothing is wrong with you. Those are just the passage of life. If it's going to be glorious, it's going to look like there is no way at the beginning that the name of the Lord may be glorified. Wherever you are this morning, pick up. Wherever you are this morning, drop that silly idea. Only the thing God said to you can bring your breakthrough. Keep doing that. Keep doing that. And the Lord, God that we serve, will come through for you. Don't be discouraged. On that child, don't be discouraged. On that child, don't be discouraged. It's a gift from God. He's going to drop the bangi. He's going to drop the cocaine. Yes, I mean it. He will, he will drop it. If Paul could drop his madness and pick the gospel, who is he that God cannot convert him? God never gave up on Paul. Paul was a murderer. 
but he became a preacher. He became a good news. He became a source of joy to his generation. I prophesy upon that child, as you are holding the picture in your heart, as you are holding the picture of that girl, he is coming back home. He is coming back home. We saw the other side of Rahab the harlot. He is coming from her waywardness. He is coming to serve the Lord with you because he was originally from God. He was only stolen and her heart is being restored right now. I pray for such parents wherever you are at this hour. I decree in the name of Jesus Christ the God that met Paul, Saul of Damascus, that same God is meeting your son. That same God is meeting your daughter. Oh yes, he's still in doing it. He's still in the business. He's still in the business. He's still in the business of comforting the hard, broken people. In the name of Jesus. Yes, I don't know who you are. That child is going to call you today. He's going to call you today. He will tell you, Mom, I'm coming back. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The prodigal son, Father, never give up. Never give up. Everybody have given up. In fact, the elder brother was not expecting him back home. That's why he was sad. He doesn't see the need for party. But the father never gave up. He was still at the door. Put your faith as a father, as a parent, at the door of that child's life. Very shortly, you will see your son, you will see your daughter coming back home. And there will be merry, there will be joy, there will be jubilation. You'll be talking about the bad thing that he used to do. I'm sure after that guy settled down, he told his father all that happened. All the story will be converted to glory. All the story will be converted to glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, that business that is noise diving is going down and down and down. Remember, Peter was in that situation. Remember, the sons of the prophet, they were in that situation. They borrow an ass head just to expand where they were. You took the loan to expand the business, but somehow you were cornered. That's why I'm online today to speak into your life. The prophet said, Where fell at it? And where fell at it? Where did they? He said, Alas, Master, it was borrowed. It was borrowed. Maybe you have taken a loan that is taking a toll on you. I'm here this hour to join you that your hour of recovery is now. Your hour of recovery is now. Mine is not to give you money. I'm anointed to say, and God confirm and perform. And I'm canceling God today that he should come. He, he, he created me that way to speak into your life. He wakened my ear money by money. He anoints my tongue to speak to them that are weary. I speak to you prophetically that help must come true for you. Help must come true for you. Oh, yes. The Bible says about wisdom. He said he, he binded the flood. He binded the flood. That flood of life that is about to take you, that is about to overwhelm you and displace you out of where you belong. God, I pray in the name of Jesus, the oil on the mandate of restoration, let every flood, let every flood, let every flood be licked up, just like the water that you lick up on Mount Carmel. In the name of Jesus Christ, just like the fire on the altar of the Elijah prepared, that was leaking water. The impossible shall be made possible to you. Watch out in the next seven days. God is going to send you destiny helper. He will touch someone that will come through for you. Everything that you are looking for is in the house of somebody who doesn't need it. Oh yes, there's somebody holding that blessing and he will locate you in the name of Jesus Christ. No more tear. No more tear. Son of God, begin to sing. Daughter of God, begin to rejoice. It's a brand new day. It's a brand new week for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are people who have worsened your situation by what you are told. But I'm here this morning to dismantle every problem. Because the word of God says, in nothing be terrified by your adversary. For to them it is a token of perdition, but to you it is of that of salvation. Whatever you are suffering now, you become a consultant. Men and women will be bringing money, treasure for you because the oil to conquer this has been released upon you. May the Lord bless you. 
May the Lord overturn your mountain. Oh, he said, wisdom, wisdom, overturn mountain. May what to do to overturn this situation may be given to you, may be revealed to you in the name of Jesus Christ. You are there this morning. You are not born again. I'm sent to you this hour. It is time to turn over your life to Jesus. Oh, yes, your life is safer only in his hand. It is him that is end to every crisis. I want you to know, as you give your life this morning, it will be a dawn of a new day. A turnaround will occur. Oh, when Jesus came face to face with Peter, the drought of his life ceased. As you are willing right now, I would like to pray with you. Say after me, Lord Jesus, thank you for today. I am a sinner, but today I come unto you. Forgive me my sins and my trespasses. I believe in my heart that you are the Son of God and that you die and rose from the grave for my sake. I receive and I subscribe to the perfect work of Calvary. From today, I'm born again. I love you for the rest of my life and I will walk with you. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name. You that is smoking there, bangy or whatever, and you have prayed this prayer, I want you to know it's a new beginning. God will hold your hand and walk you through. The banner display on your screen, that is my contact. The second one is the physical address of our ministry. Find it pleasurable to fellowship with us. God bless you and prosper you. And in case we are not close to you, look for other uh, Bible believing church, anointed men of God, where you could be taught the way of God and begin to fellowship with them and let them know what you have done so that you can be adequately guided. God bless you and prosper you. And for the rest of us, here is the word of the Lord for you. God is on the way. Amen. He's on the way with his big handkerchief Amen. to wipe every tears of your life. Every tears, every tears, every tears. Every tears is coming to an end. With that joy, why don't you bless the Lord with an offering this morning? Give to God a demonstration of your love. I look at the life of Cornelius. When he gave, things turned around. Every gift speak before the Lord. Every offering. That is why Satan doesn't want you to have a voice before the Lord. That is it. You remember Abel? He was dead, yet his he was speaking. His blood was speaking. This offering will speak volume for you. Amen. He will put in the heart of God to remind, to remember you Amen. and fulfill his covenant. Amen. Cast that offering, the pay bill is displayed, 9, 5, 6, 8, and 9, 7. And the bank detail is also there. Don't walk away. Don't walk away. If you know God as a rewarder, you will not walk away. He doesn't come, people. He doesn't need your seed to be more God, but he need your seed to be a blessing to you. Apostle Paul said, I'm not asking you to give because I have a need. He said, I've learned to abound and abase. I always humble myself when I'm giving towards God. I always ask myself a question. Before I was born, were there no churches? There were churches. Before I was born, were there no men of God? Was I the one financing them? No, I only have opportunity to be blessed. I want you to do that with that consciousness. God does not need a dime from you to be God. He's already God. Praise God. And I want you to do that. It's an opportunity you have to partner with God, to give motion to the gospel. Praise the Lord. Lord, accept their offering. Use it for the advancement of your kingdom. And in return, bless everyone. Thank you, Father. I decree journey mercy to those who are traveling. I decree those who are going for an interview. I decree in the name of Jesus Christ that favor will secure that position for you. Favor will secure that position for you. The favor of God will go beyond your, your profile. The favor of God will go beyond your CV. Every question you will, not be, you will be asked that will make you a failure. Whosoever on the panel will ask that question. We'll be late. He will be late. God will delay him because time has come that you are gainfully employed. Be blessed and have a beautiful day. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. See you on top. Heavenly Father.